I worked with them. They were such a. It was this one guy who was like the the head of the sales for a, a, a not a, not Guitar Center. I forget the name of the shop, but it was a, a music shop down in San Diego, and he was like their North American rep for Turkish, and so. It wasn't Roger Friend, was it? That doesn't sound unfamiliar, but I haven't thought of the dude's name mm. in, since probably 2006. Okay. And like, and I don't have any old emails or anything like that. I I um, I, I remember him that that he had a lot of cool old cars. Like okay. he'd, he'd show up and like he had an you know old Volvos and you know like a 2002 BMW. You know. And um, uh, forget the name name of the car, but it was it had like an air airbag suspension. Um, you know, it's from like the '60s or something like that. Mm. And uh, but he would come up and meet me and bring me symbols and stuff okay. like that. And so I was good at Photoshop. So he was trying to advance the line, and I was actually the guy who designed all the artwork and okay. the, you know how everything would lay out on the symbols for the line that they ended up coming trying to come up with. And then something happened, and they, I guess he stopped working with them, and it kind of went away for a little bit. And, I, and but then I have seen Turkish symbols recently. Yeah. So maybe they have something a, they happened. Have a booth they have at Nam. Up. And I saw them at Nam. Yeah. Last year. Yep. And I was like, wow, I haven't seen these in a while. So um, I guess I still have it in my mind that they're gone because like, I remember calling them up and saying like, hey, I need more, and it's like, yeah, that's that that's that's all dried up. And, mm -hmm. But I guess it I guess it's it's it came back around again. But they were great. I mean, I could, I could, I could, I could go down to the gram weight that I wanted and right. tell them exactly what I wanted. They were very, very uh, accommodating. You know? Yeah, yeah. I met with them at Nam last year. Um, I'm trying to remember the gentleman's name, but that runs it now. Um, but he's from Turkey, and really, really nice guy. But you know. the dude I knew from San Diego, I'll say this: Wh whatever his name is, and I wish I could remember his name. He reminds me of the main character in Better Call Saul. If you've seen, if you've seen, um, long time ago, Breaking Bad, yeah. And then they did the spinoff, brother, you know, the the lawyer in Breaking Bad, and then he's the main guy in Better Call Saul. Oh, okay. And uh, this guy from San Diego, kind of, look, when I saw Better Call Saul, I remember telling my wife, like, I have this old guy that I, I, I that used to be my rep for Turkish. He reminds me of this guy, you know, like same kind of like friendly you know, demeanor and similar look and stuff like that. But, hmm. um, yeah, maybe I'll run into him again someday. But what is, um, what does your wife do? Well, she, um, do you have kids? No, no, kids? she does. Okay. She does. Um, she has, you know, well, they're mine now. Um, two beautiful boys that, uh, um, that, uh, live in Florida, actually oh, okay. 22 and 23 years old. And they're both at, at that age. They are so successful right now. It's I'm really really proud of them. They they have great jobs and they're making good money. And they have their own uh, condo on the on the water. And Jeez. yeah, I, 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 when I was that. 22, I had five roommates. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, she uh, she actually right now is back at the golf course. Oh, nice. And the reason is because the same company that manages the golf course manages the Thousand Oaks Civics Arts Plaza. So four years ago, she got promoted over there to run the theater. Um, she runs all the concessions and food and beverage and everything at the theater. Mm -hmm. But when the theater closed in March, um, you know, and we don't know when it's going to reopen, um, she, she stayed on for a while, and then they finally just... They said, we don't, we don't have it, you know, we're going to have to furlough you. And um, luckily, at the last minute, someone said, well, wait a minute. You worked at the golf course before. The golf course is open. You have your choice. And most people don't get a choice when they're getting furloughed. They said, wow. you can either go on furlough, collect unemployment, or you can go back and work at the golf course until the theater reopens. Wow. So she got very lucky, and that's where she's at right now. What did she do there? Right now, they, they opened out, you've probably seen it, because mm -hmm. if you've played there, between the 8th and 12th hole, there's a snack shop. Yes. And it sat dormant for years. Yeah. I always wonder, when we play, I'm like, why, why, why is there not? It's the one right there, uh, the hole with the, the lake that you hit over, right? No, no, no. no. That's it's like right, fifth, it's past right? that. That's it's, six. Yes. It's, that, it's along the side of that par three, that yes. real short par three. Yep. Yeah. So she, they said, why don't we open it up? We've always wanted to open it up. They just remodeled it last year, so mm -hmm. it's it's a nice little shop. It's got all 
all the stuff inside to to make you know cook sandwiches and cook things. Oh, great! Um, and they said, you know, call it Toby Snack Shop, call it whatever you want, and run your own business out of there. And so she, uh, it's open Wednesday through Sunday, and um, and she is just killing it. Wow, that's she's great. Every, she's building a reputation for herself because she she's not selling pre pre uh, made food. She's she's cooking everything, you know, very quickly because you're obviously wow. you're coming through. Uh, that instantly catches on with golfers. Now yeah, that, you know. So her famous yeah. thing there is a turkey pesto panini, oh, and great. and she she has these regulars that come back religiously and have to have that sandwich every week. Um, can they, is there a number they can call like a yes. hole and a half ahead of time? Yep. And, yep. Yeah. She's got her little bat phone that they gave her and they, yep. they put it up on the, uh, you know, the screen on the golf courts, uh, on the golf carts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's killing it. She's got all these regulars now. She's building up a reputation for herself. And at some point when the theater reopens, you know, she'll go back over there and pass it on to someone else. But she's really created a, a nice business, a, additional business for the golf course that That's they great. didn't, that they didn't have before. That's a big deal. I mean, like, when the Sterling Hills switched ownership, they, like, made a special deal. Where they give you a token, and, you know, it was, like, $43 to ride, and they and uh, you got a free warm-up b- bucket, and you got a token to use at the turn, and you could use it for a sandwich or for a beverage. Uh-huh. And, like, that was a big deal for my, my playing partner and I. We'd go there, and, like, I was like, yeah, I know I can get a breakfast sandwich yeah. on the way around the turn, and I knew... I knew to call, you know, at, at eight and a half and say, I want, you know, a sourdough, uh, fried egg with cheese and bacon and, um, light mayonnaise, please, you know, yeah. and get them, get my breakfast sandwich. And I knew exactly what I was getting. So, well, with that course, you know, unless you, unless you're starving, you order when you're on the eighth mm-hmm. and then you go keep playing and then it circles back around and at the 12th, you're right back at the snack shop. Yeah. So you got an hour and later. She knows, so she knows about the timing uh, these, yeah, and they pick it up on the twelfth and keep moving on. So that's really cool. Yeah. So, what are your favorite holes there, or what, what club? What kind of clubs do you play? Um, I have a mix of clubs. Me um, too. Yeah. Um, you know, I just got into it when actually when I came back up to Guitar Center. I'd never played golf until until you know I I came back here and when I first came back and it's been thirteen years now. You know, pretty much all the executives played golf at that time, mm-hmm. and and I remember a funny story. Our uh, Jay, who uh, now is uh, the CEO of Roland, became a big wig at Roland, but he was our executive vice president, and he came in my office. I had only been there for about two months, and he's an avid golfer all the time. And he came in, and he shut my my office door, and had this really serious look on his face. And I'm thinking, oh boy, what did what did I do? I screwed something up and he just sat there for a minute. He's staring at me, kind of shaking his head and he goes, do you play golf? And I said, no, no, I really don't. He goes, Hmm, you want to move up in the company? And I said, well, of course, doesn't everyone? He goes, you should learn golf. (laughs) And he walked out and I was like, Okay. <laughs> I, got, I so, got the same thing at CAA when I was there. That's how I got into it. Yeah. So I went out and got clubs. And, um, wow. Uh, and then I've upgraded them a couple times since. It's become a popular item as a, for my wife as a Christmas present for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I just got one of the um, – uh, what's the, the guy's name on the putters, the really fancy putter? Oh, uh, Scotty Cameron. Yes, just got a Scotty Cameron putter. Fastback, um, just wet single blade or like single? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, well, it's got that the des- yeah, the, the design to it. Yeah, it's got the kind of the fastback, yeah. the teeth. Right. Come at, uh, I forget the actual name of it, but yeah. if I was going to get one, that's what I would get. That's a yeah. good putter. Yeah, that 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 uh, it's a pretty amazing putter. Um, what do you normally hit? Um, what do you normally hit at uh, at Robles, like score wise? I'm not that great. I, I ninety. A good day is a ninety. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I, I'm like if 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 my score starts with an eight, I'm happy. I'm like, wow, great, you know. Yeah. And like, but for me, it's usually between eighty eight and ninety two. Yeah. Know? Especially I'm, at Robles, I'm so. probably around a ninety five average. Uh, ninety is a good game for me. Got I got you. very humbled a couple of weeks ago. We went up to Santa Barbara and played Sandpiper. Oh man, I've, my buddy's played that a bunch. He's trying to get me to go up there and play, and he's like, it is so tough. Deep he's prepared. Like, a box of box of balls at least. Deep you know? prepared. Yeah. I mean, I, I first nine, I was feeling pretty good. I was, 
you know, I was like one over on every hole, and I was going, mm-hmm. mm, that's not bad. Bogey the ball? back nine will destroy you. Mm. It's, it's, <laughs> it is just these valleys and cliffs off into the ocean, and I, yeah, I lost, I lost a countless number of balls on that back nine. My, my playing partner, um, he's also my guitarist in my bands and um, ripping guitar player, uh, he just did like a, a trip out to Wisconsin back with his wife and kid and drove there and back. And he wanted to play some golf course along the way, but he couldn't like put the whole bag in the car. So he just brought uh, like five clubs and like a small lightweight, like a walking bag. Mm. And he switched. So he just brought his driver, his five iron, his eight iron, and then his pitching wedge and sand wedge. And he hasn't changed from that. He's like, I think this is how I play now. He's oh. like, it takes the guesswork out of the club, yeah. and you just need to, you just need to be, you need to get better at feathering your club. He's like, I never worry about club choice now. He's like, two hundred yards out, all I have is my five iron. That's it. I better, I better, you know, I better hit it well, you know. Or if it's two, tw- you know, if it's one hundred and eighty, eighty yards out, I still got to use my five iron. Hmm. I better learn how to, you know, open the face and drop it on the, on the, on the wherever I am a little softer or not swing so hard, those kinds of things. And, um, I tried playing that with him like that way a little bit with him the other day. And it was really, um, mentally clearing. It Hmm. was, it was an interesting experiment, you know? Um, but then he's talking and I was like, eh, I I like having my club choice. I like getting my distance. And I know if I hit this club, well, I can, you know, if I hit my eight iron, right, I'm going to hit 157 yards and, there you go. And so, yeah. Um, so it's interesting. It was interesting. I don't have that kind of control yet. I, I've just, I'm, I'm getting slowly getting better, but I, you know, I'm, I still shank all over the place sometimes. And, and I haven't learned, um, well, he's like a nine or 10 handicap. Uh, yeah. You know? See, he'll shoot in 78 sometimes. I get play, you know, and I'm like, I wish I could do that. Yeah, and so many of my friends that, that I play with are at that level, and I'm always yeah. I always feel like I'm holding them back. But I just I just go out to have fun. It's yeah. good. It's good exercise and same. Um, yeah, you and I are right about the same. You know. Yeah. Same. Same. You know, you're sitting around 95. I'm probably yeah. average around like a 91 or a 90. So we're, we we'd be a good matchup. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because they do that cool back nine breakfast over there. I don't know yeah. if you know about it. But oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've done that many times. Yeah. I've played Robles a lot. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Cam Springs, I really like that track. I don't know why it's so unpopular because it's a really interesting set of holes there. I don't, know if uh, I've, I don't think I've ever played there. It's just it's the in, right at the bottom of the grade. Yeah. You know, Cam Springs uh, right there. It's it, That's really fun. The holes two through seven are over the hill and back where there's no houses and no, nothing. You're just back in nature with no visible oh, that's great. buildings or anything. And it's really quiet. And you see a lot, hear a lot of birds, a lot of wildlife and stuff like that. It's very pretty. Um, I like that a lot. Um, yeah. Probably the fo- favorite hold you, to answer your question is, is five. Five is, which, all right. So one and then two to par three, three down. And then four comes. Four goes, four goes up. up. And then five's the one with the fence. The big drop. The fence off the tee and the big drop with that big, yeah. I always end up below that tree and yeah. trying, to, trying to hit a huge, uh, you know, a giant flop shot. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's a, that is. I like five. I was behind you. Oh, that's the book, falling. book falling down. Mm. Yeah, that that um, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, I'm usually, I'm usually five iron off that and just try to punch it low and let it roll right to that little spot there below that that sand trap on the left, you know. Yeah, and uh, leave myself maybe like, 120 in or something. It's like, if I can do that, that's fine. But, yeah. geez, that. that it's like an optical illusion to that tee box, you know. It really messes me up a lot of times. Yeah. Know? I'll end up pulling the ball crazy or something <laughs> like that, or I hit a huge slice or something like that. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Tell me, what I saw on your text to me when I asked you, give me a couple cool things to, to tell me about. Yeah. The two things that, and start with whatever one you want. Licensed pyrotechnician <laughs> and big winner on Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Both yeah, my, are my two claims to fame. Yeah. Um, well, the Wheel of Fortune one, I just I I went on the show in 2001. Um, had always wanted to go on there, and you know was really good at it sitting on the couch. It's obviously a lot different in person. Um, 
and just uh, was losing and losing. I was playing two women that the, que the, que the questions that kept coming or the puzzles that kept coming